Moonbase Alpha status report. 1,095 days after leaving Earth's orbit. Dr. Helena Russell recording. A strange and frightening thing is happening. Our sensor and scanner readings are reacting wildly, erratically, projecting a weird turbulence of high intensity. It is as though a strange presence is among us, taking control. Commander. There is something out there. Let's see it on the big screen. Maya. The turbulence is magnetic. Punch through it. I can't. There's something there. Just a faint, but her vital signs are down. Alan? John. I'm all right. Oh. Oh. It's like, it's like thunder. Here. Oh. Turbulence decreasing. You don't have to bow down and adore me. That's not our style. You doubt my credentials? You haven't presented any. Oh, I don't blame you. But all these highly imaginative works of fiction that you call religion have clouded your minds, filled you with false gods. However, I do assure you that I am what you would call the genuine article. You look like an artist's rendition of the original article. I'll, I'll give you that. Artists have their insights. However, let us discuss these matters in a civilized fashion. Over a meal. That went out with Nero. With Messalina, as a matter of fact. But you are right. It is a little old-fashioned. Pure protein. It tastes like nectar. One glassful is food for a month. Leave it. 
You earthlings were always the most skeptical of my creations. It's our way. You should know that. Skeptical, cynical me. Perhaps that's why I always had such a soft spot for you. Some of my creatures are like tame rabbits. Too bad. They were doing on their knees by now, or offering up a sacrificial goat. We're a bit low on sacrificial goats. However, one thing that does seem to have impressed you in the past is force. you are. I told you who I am. Magus, your creator. Whoever you are, you have a great deal of power. Now, what do you want with us? I want what I've always wanted, ever since I first created you. To help you. How? You've been a great disappointment to me. All those wars. Your willful squandering of the natural resources of the planet I gave you. Your pollution of it. You said you were going to help us. I am. How? I'm going to give you something that I have never allowed to any other species. What is that? A second chance. You're going to return us to Earth? To a new Earth. A new Eden where you can begin again. New Earth. It is a quarter the size of old Earth, and its air, water, and vegetable life are identical. What about its sun? It has a sun like old Earth's, and in the same proportion to its size. Why didn't we see the planet before? Of course, I did not wish it. You seem amused, Doctor. It's just that your answer is so exactly what it should be if you are what you say you are. The planet is ideal for humankind. Your wanderings are over. Uh, excuse me, but uh, humankind does like to have a little look around before it calls a place home. I suggest a team of you visit the planet's surface to see for yourselves. Why? My readings indicate he's telling the truth about the environment. The planet could support us. Then we could settle there. If data is identical to what I have about Earth. All right, Magus. We accept your invitation. Excellent. Then I suggest the team should be as follows. Yourself, of course, as leader, since you are the only one to make the decision. The lovely creature Maya must go. As scientific officer, naturally. The equally enchanting Dr. Russell as medical officer. And Mr. Badeshi. Because whether he knows it or not, he is a farmer at heart. Like generations of his family before him. I'm commander of this base. If there are teams to be picked, I pick them. I am commander of a great deal more than this speck of dust. That is the team. Either that or none. All right, ladies. Alan, our way down there, you're in command. Right. Splendid, then I will transport you down to the planet immediately. No, no. We'll go down on one of our eagles. Typically stubborn, commendably cautious. An eagle it shall be. Tony, check the space suits. That will not be necessary. Check the suits, Tony. Yasko, preparing for liftoff. Have a seat. Clear to liftoff, Eagle 4.
glad to have it your way. That is one of my privileges. Yosko. Yosko. Konex Alpha, coming out. Perhaps my way of transporting you has interfered. It will come back later. Shall we disembark? Commander Koenig, do you read me? Do you read me? Commander Koenig, come in, Commander Koenig. Do you read me? without pollution. And there don't seem to be any harmful bacteria in it. Wow, you could plant grain here and have lasagna come up. <laughs> <laughs> you do like it. Well, it seems compatible. What about animals? There are some wild cattle, boar and horses. Enough to start breeding from. Water? Water is pure and plentiful. Fruit goes freely and the soya bean grows wild over the whole planet. It is the Garden of Eden, Mark II. You will be very happy here. Well, I'd like to make a feasibility study of the entire planet before we make decisions about Gardens of Eden. I'd like to bring a task force here. Nobody else will be coming down. What? The decision has been made. You are my new Adams, my new Eves. Conic to Alpha. Come in, Alpha. There is really no point in that, Julia. We're great triers, we primitives. Conic to Alpha. Come in, Alpha. Up there is your past. Your future lies here. We choose our own future. I am your Lord and Creator. You must put your trust in me. The people up there that need us. I shall provide. They shall not want. Just a minute. The moon itself, what about that? The moon will continue to orbit New Earth for a time anyway. Then I shall send it on its way. But it's our home. This is your home now. Here you will live and love, and from you will spring the new human species. Mankind's second chance. Look, whoever or whatever you are, you know who I am. Do not diminish my respect for you. This is Moonbase Alpha. Moonbase Alpha. Commander Koenig, come in. Come in, Commander Koenig. Well, they'll be down on that planet. It's the only place they can be. One thing's for sure. We're certainly not going to find them by sitting on our butts here. I've worked it out in great detail. I've been monitoring you for a long time. I trust we've proved interesting subjects. Yes, indeed. I've worked out the pair bonding in great detail. The pair bonding? Yes. It's very important to establish the right mix of genes. You plan to do a little genetic engineering? Precisely. And to that end, I've decided that you, Helena, shall be Tony's mate, and you, Maya, shall be the commander. Wait a minute. What? You've decided? Yes. Don't you think you should have consulted us first? I mean, it's very bad manners, and besides that, it's very bad psychology. It's also bad biology. We may not even be compatible. You've got a lot to learn about humanity, Santa Claus. I know all about humanity. Humanity is mine. Humanity belongs to no one. I have worked it out all very carefully. You are all compatible. You and the commander will make a fascinating interplanetary mix. Psychon and Earth. 
Your iron intellect, my dear, typical of your species, interbred with the commander's iron will, so typical of his. Those very qualities might get in your way. Your monitoring may not be as good as you think. Maya happens to be very beautiful, but I... But left yourself, you would choose Helena. I am well aware of that. But it is not the mixture I want. I'm afraid I cannot sanction it. I'm not looking for your blessing. We make our own choices. Much less often than you think. As for you, my dear, your natural aristocracy allied to Mr. Vadeshi here. A man rooted in the rocks and the earth. Your offspring will be remarkable. Offspring? Yeah, you would say that. You couldn't just say children. There's one thing you've overlooked. What have I overlooked? We're not rabbits. There's something else. If you don't recognize that fact, who would? Oh, love. I know all about love. I invented it. There is just one rule. You are on no account whatsoever to leave this glade for the moment. Why? Because I do not wish it. The boundary is very clearly defined by that line of rocks. You may not cross it. Besides, there will be no need. Everything you want to sustain you is here. I insist you reopen communications with Alpha. I do not wish it. But we do wish it. My regrets. And now I must leave you. It will be good to have a moon. We've never had one before. You will feel quite at home here. Oh, by the way, you'll find its light has all the magical romantic qualities associated with it on old Earth. Glad you think so. No, oh, it's still there somewhere. Only, only he's exerting some power to disperse its particles, like powder dissolving in a liquid. Hey, do you think that? Well, that he could really be what he says he is. I, God. I mean, Jehovah. Well, those are just names. Your kind is given to an all-powerful being that you think exists, but you don't understand. So you're saying that he could be God? Well, if he'd come down to Earth a few years back, an awful lot of people would have said so. He's shown godlike powers, but the way that he's shown them, his methods, I don't know. Two plus two doesn't make four. Well, let's go see what his food's like. Eagle One ready for liftoff. Alan, are you sure? It's been 24 hours, yes, girl. I'm going after them. Clear to lift off, Eagle One. Eagle One to command center. There's something wrong. I haven't got lift off. Well, his food's not poisonous. Well, that's something. <laughs> what the? Try Helena. John. Very ingenious. Magnetic field cocoons. Positive, negative. He's making sure we do things his way. He's paired us off. Yep. 
It won't work, Bengals. Do you hear me? Maker in the sky. Yes. What? Uh, I said. does his arrangements. I wonder, too. No. That's an interesting theory of yours, that, uh, that God is just a name for, uh, for God. Comparative universal theology used to be a hobby of mine. An interesting thing. We, we managed to find our God, the creator of this universe, to find that he had a God, he created a bigger one. Our universe is just a, just a part of it all. And another point about divine power. If we learn to explain it, I mean, understood its mechanism. Regard it as divine. You know we're being manipulated. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. It's just simple brainwashing, you know. The music, I mean. That's what it is.
Are you all right? Thank you. Anytime. The girl, I... Creature. We're in the cave. Left some tracks. Let's follow them. What is it that makes the human species so perverse? There was quite a show you put on last night. What was it you didn't want us to see? I forbade you to leave the glade because I knew the dangers that lay outside it. I did not wish you to be destroyed before we had even begun. Well, what do you call the dangers? The apes or those other things? Throughout its whole history, your species has been notable for two things. Asking interminable questions and injuring itself. You haven't answered. You were homeless, I gave you a home. You were hopeless, I gave you hope. We were never without hope. What more could you possibly ask for? Free will. Free will. It is a phantom, a will of the wisp. It exists nowhere in the universe. We had it before you took it away from us. Your idea of free will is the right to say no. Free will is also the right to walk out of this glade without you acting like something out of the book of Job. It is the right to try. Yeah, I'm all right. Oh. Helena, you all right? My... I'm okay. Phew. We've hit force fields before. Yeah. Congratulations. You're a big, big physicist. What is it out there you don't want us to see? We already know there are other beings on this Sooner or later, we're going to get close to them. The ban was for your protection. Last night, did it look as if we needed your protection? Commander Koenig, I am well aware that to erect any barrier in front of the human species is immediately to challenge them to cross it. However, this is one barrier that will not be crossed. You can't keep a force field up forever. I can indeed. I can ill afford the energy. But if you insist upon behaving like children, you must be treated like children. But please, let us not quarrel. Enjoy yourselves. What was it you used to say on old earth? Make love, not war. Gotta get out of this zoo. Look, even, even if we break through the forest field, anything we try, he'll know about it, like last night. How did he know about that? ESP? No. No, I don't think so. I scanned him just now. There's some kind of power source inside him. An organic source? No. It's an implant. Fantastically potent, and I don't know how it works, but it's mechanical. Mechanical? Mm. It's a device which means his powers are physical, not psychic. What did he mean when he said he could ill afford the energy? Well, his powers are beyond our understanding, Tony, but they're not limitless, and he's got an awful lot to do with them. Well, like what, for instance? Like he can hold this planet together. Look, the moon is much bigger in relation to this planet than it was to Earth, and very much closer. The gravitational pull. Hmm, Magus must be countering it, or else this planet would blow apart under the strain. Yeah, 
And it's obviously something he's doing that's stopping anybody coming down from Alpha, right? Right. We've got to get out of here. If we can get to those tracks outside the cave, anything to give us a clue as to what's going on around here. Yeah. Wait a minute. could do it. An owl, I think, for its eyesight. Maya, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Good luck. I thought you were all extinct down here. The more I learn, the less I know. Where you go. You mean he caught you and let you go? Mm. Which proves he's a superman, but not supernatural. What about the tracks? Did you find anything? I found the same ones, only inside the glade as well. Where? Over there, behind some bushes. I saw it clearly from the air. Come on. Looks like these rocks have only just been put here. Yeah, like it was blocked in the last few hours. We're still inside the force field. You know, it's possible. This cave connects with the one outside, the one we saw last night. Now, if it does, we can get through it and out of this glade. Lasers. Now! All right, come on. Stay close behind.
what I desire. Why did you attack us? So that you might kill us. That is why our kind go and fight the ape thing. He won't let us die. Who won't let you die? M Magus. He is the last of the line of cosmic magicians. They could perform miracles through physics. What does he want? He wants the secret of creation. To be able to create life. And we mutants are the result of Magus's attempts to discover that secret. We're the children of other species he's trapped and brought to this planet. The results of his manic probing into our earliest fertilized cell. He won't even let us die. Why? He still thinks he may learn something from our mutilated genes. Down here is the only place we can get away from him. He'll never come down here. Is there a way through the caves that will lead us out of the glade? Thank you. Last time we met, you were an owl, I believe. I'm ashamed to say that your species mastery of the molecular trick slipped my mind for the moment. So you take your revenge like a child. You take me too lightly. You need a lesson. This is your Garden of Eden, is it? And those are your Adams and Eves. You were going to use us like laboratory animals, weren't you? No, that was not my purpose with you. You know, you're a bungler who creates nothing, nothing but misery. My purpose with you was to create a new species of mankind. Strong, resourceful, brilliant, dedicated. All the qualities you possess between you. And together, we will work on the great mystery of creation as a team. I realize now I cannot solve it on my own. You call yourself a creator? You're a fraud and a liar. A harmless deception to gain your confidence. You didn't. I have known and admired humankind a long time. Well, it's not mutual, believe me. I have been among you many times. I was Simon Magus, who offered to buy the Nazarene's powers from his apostles. I was Merlin. I was Nostradamus. I was the magician in ancient Egypt who contended in magic with Moses. No doubt. When the right time comes, I will invest you and your offspring with the kind of powers that I myself possess. You will help me. Help you. Help you to do that? Either you will agree to my terms, or I will destroy your companions on the moon. Not even you can destroy the moon. I can destroy your base then, your life support. <laughs> Repair crew to section eight. Repair crew to section eight. Maybe to put pressure on John. Stop! You agree to my terms? I... Uh, I agree to talk about it. You are a realist. We'll discuss it tomorrow.
got it. What? The way out? I don't know. Let me try it out on you. He had us whipped. He knew it. Yet he wouldn't wait. He wouldn't press home his advantage. Why? Because for some reason he can't stand the dark. What? Superman? Afraid of the dark? Now think about it. Last night he left before it got dark. He won't go in the caves. And what about the laser, the effect it had on him? Well, he drew strength from it. Right. Of course. He needs light. His power comes from light. That would put him on the other side of the planet now, where the sun is still shining. Well, we saw him last night when we crossed the boundary. No, we didn't. That was a holograph, a projection of himself in the sky. And that implant I detected in him, that could be a light decelerator. A what? Imagine light traveling at 186,000 miles per second. Well, for you, I'll try anything. You find a way to slow it down to zero constantly as it's coming at you. And then you harness the resulting energy. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> it isn't for us. But they managed to solve it. That's why they're super beams. <sighs> there must be some small crystal implanted somewhere in his brain stem. Well, the energy would be instantly available then. <laughs> and directed simply by thought. Unlimited personal power. Which must be the nearest thing there is to being God. So how do we fight that? We have to find some way to cut off his source of power. Which means to block out the light. How are we going to do that? By being primitive. It's the last thing he'll expect from us. Hurry it up, make us will be here in a minute. Now we've got to make sure it works. Got it? Yep. Okay. Hang on. Got it. Got it. John. All right, cover it up. The total blackout. Black as pitch. Now, if this doesn't work, what Omega suspect it's the end of all of us and Moonbase Alpha. I know, Tony. Yes, we have considered. You will cooperate with me in my great work. Megas, we don't trust you. Why should we put ourselves completely at your mercy? I need you. I cannot do it alone. This is your guarantee. All right, Megas. But these are the conditions. There are to be no more experiments on the mutants. Not even observations. Valuable things may still be learned from them. One's mistakes are often more instructive than one's successes. Those are our conditions, and that is our ultimatum. As always, the arrogance of your species astounds me. And the horror of your deeds astonishes us. How dare you? By me, with imbeciles. Without me, the planet will break apart. Light! Give me life, or we'll all die! Call it to Alpha! Call it to Alpha! Come in, Alpha! Come in, Alpha! Only Megas' power is holding this planet together against the pull of our moon. Call it to Alpha! Come in, Alpha! Call it to Alpha!
Hold yourself. Shot, isn't it? I'd like to bet against him. Nope. 